Hi, good afternoon. My name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm here with EdChat Interactive, and normally I'd be coming to you from New York. Uh, now I'm coming from you from San Diego, so it's 5 o'clock in the afternoon here. Uh, pretty sunny day. I'm here at the ASU GSV conference, and I can see a bunch of people outside the, the, the studio here uh, who may also be participating in tonight's event. Uh, today, uh, we're having Zachary Walker come back for the third of his uh, four-part series on EdTech Tools. And today's session is going to be on using back channels. Uh, Zach is, Zachary is author of Teaching the Last Backpack Generation. Our next two sessions on May 4th, uh, we're um, going to have Nikki Knapp to talk about game design for your middle school or high school class. Uh, this is going to be part of our game-based learning series uh, that's that's being sponsored by this uh, Serious Play Associate uh, Serious Play Conference, which will be held in July. Uh, Nikki um, has come up with a curriculum that can be used in uh, middle school or high school classes for virtually any uh, content area. And then on May 9th, we'll be having we'll be continuing our Corwin series with Lynn Charat and uh, B. Planch. We're talking about leading collaborative learning. But tonight, we're having Zachary Walker, so coming to us from Singapore. So let me bring Zachary up on stage. Well, good morning. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Hello. So what time is it in Singapore right now? It is 8 a.m., so 12 hours ahead of the East Coast. Uh -huh. And um, you were just in the U.S. actually. So, what conference were you in the U.S. for? Uh, I was in um, St. Louis for the Council for Exceptional Children. I uh, I started as a general ed teacher, but but uh, worked my way. I like to say worked my way up to special education. Um, so it's it's the largest special educators conference in the world. So wow. uh, I was there doing some talks and learning from others. It was a great conference. And what did you talk about? Uh, I talked about a couple of different things. Um, one is, you know, obviously I always talk about technology and how we can mm -hmm. better use it to reach all learners. Uh, right. But also looking at um, some inclusive issues and inclusion around the world and special education around the world and, and um, some terminology that we use. So it was quite a, quite a good experience. It was, it was a great conference. Wow. So why don't we get started with, with tonight's event. Uh, I'll bring myself down and I'll uh, bring your slides up. Okay, great. Thanks, Mitch. Um, hello, everybody. If you could just give me a quick wave um, so I know that you can hear and that you can see. Remember, um, you are some of your faces are being projected, and I appreciate um, that when, when they are. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I appreciate it when you put your camera on because it makes it a little more personal. That being said, remember if you have anything hanging out of your nose or your mouth or whatever that everyone can see it. So I'm sure that we all did our due diligence and, um, and checked ourselves out ahead of time because uh, that is important as well. Um, thank you again for being here. We are going to talk about, um, about the, the back channel discussions today. Um, as Mitch mentioned, this is the third of four that I'm doing. Um, on all different ways, practical ways to use technology in the class. Um, a couple of things before we get started. I will have to, I do not control my own slides on Shindig. So um, Mitch has control of them. So if you hear me say next slide, uh, that's just a prompt to him. Um, and he's fantastic. He's got the fastest fingers in the business. So that is not a problem. The second thing is um, we oftentimes have people from around the world who have attended. And um, there are multiple rooms. So if I don't see your hand or your question, it's only because I only have access to one room. And sometimes there are multiple rooms that, that get started. So please be patient, uh, but, but we uh, will move pretty quickly. And I'm also gonna ask you to really participate. Um, the webinars that I do are not the kind that you just kind of sit there and sit back and, and listen and maybe fall asleep. So hopefully you'll be uh, able and willing to, to participate as well. So um, let's go to the next slide, Mitch, if you don't mind. Um, everything that we talk about today uh, is essentially from this book. Um, I've been lucky. I've been able to travel 
uh, around the world and work with teachers all over, and I've learned so many things from them. And at some point, I just said, you know what, I need to put all this in a book. So um, that's what this is from. Uh, this is this is from the book uh, Teaching the Last Backpack Generation. Last Backpack stands essentially for this is the last generation of students who will have to carry backpacks to school um, because within the next 15 years, and we're seeing this already in lots of places, all of um, all of our learning is going to take place off of a phone or a, a small tablet type of device. Um, obviously, Chromebooks are, are quite popular as well, but, but we know that students won't have to carry backpacks anymore. If they choose to, they may, but, but they're not going to have to. So that's kind of the terminology behind last backpack. So um, if we keep moving, we'll get into back channels here. Now, what is a back channel? And I just pulled this, uh, this, this definition offline, and I kind of like it, a secondary or covert route for the passage of information. So anytime we can do anything covert, I think we should, we should take advantage of that. Essentially, what a back channel discussion is, is it's a discussion that's going on behind the presentation or within the presentation, perhaps. Um, and so how many of you, if you don't mind, put, go into the, the um, I'll tell you, we'll wait a second and do that in just a second. But that, that's essentially what a back channel is. And if we go to the next slide, you'll see there's three different chat boxes that we're going to use today. First of all, we'll use the Shindig IM chat box, okay, um, which Mitch went through already. You can, if you scroll over your face, um, you will see uh, the IM pop, and you can pop that up, and we can talk in there. Twitter, which I'm hoping that many of you use already, um, because that can be a great source for back channel discussions. And finally, Days Meet, which is one of the most popular back channels out there. And I encourage you to check out all three. There's, there's tons more. I will go through a couple more at the end, as well as some tips for getting started. But we're going to go ahead and get right into to, um, some practical solutions real quick. So first thing I'd like you to do if we go to that next slide is if you can go to the IM chat box. Now, Mitch already pulled it up there. So if you can go to the chat box, please. And um, in there, pull up your chat. Okay, and I'd like to know um, if you've ever used a back channel in class. Are you familiar with them? Have you ever used a back channel in class? So I'm going to put that question right in the IM chat. And if you don't mind um, answering that, that would be fantastic. All right, so have you ever used a back channel in class? And, and again, click on the main room there. And then just respond to that. Okay. Let's see. Um, I know we've got at least you know six, eight, ten people here right now. Emma, I've used Twitter with my online undergrads. Okay, great, great. Um, yeah, Twitter is a, a huge tool um, and, and can be great for for chats. Um, and we are going to again, we are going to use uh, Twitter here in a second. So you can get your Twitter account ready if you'd like to. Um, so we'll start uh, with that now. Um, let's see, Katie, it doesn't look like you've used them. That's okay. That's all right. Um, and, and I completely understand. It's, again, it's, uh, it's something that people sometimes feel comfortable with. But if you teach, um, Padlet could be. Yeah, Padlet could be a, a tool for sure. Um, Crystal, hi, Crystal. I see... Uh, that um, you have not used them. You, you teach students with special needs, and sometimes there are some things that we need to talk about with that a little bit later to think about if you teach students with special needs. So great, great. So we will talk, um, we'll keep going here. Let's get to that next slide now. Um, why back channels? And I think that there are some important things to think about here. Number one, um, if you use a back channel, everyone has a voice. And this is critical in our classroom because when we have a regular kind of discussion, what happens? We ask a question, and oftentimes then one or two or three people get to answer, right? And what happens to the rest of the class? They have to kind of sit there, and they're not able to do anything. But if we use a back channel discussion, so if everyone gets to participate, everyone has a voice. And that's really critical. I know that there's many times I've had students who kind of sit in the back of the class, and they're quiet. They don't say anything. They're the shy girl, but they're really, really bright and have a lot to offer if we allow them that chance. The other thing about this is that it makes students become much more active learners. It's mentally taxing when you have to produce your own knowledge, your own questions, your own answers based on, on the discussion. So it's important that we give our students a chance to do this because that's really critical 
that they they have to produce their own knowledge and not just sit there and consume whatever you're giving them. So that's the first thing. The second thing about back channels, next slide, is that um, you can have them either be accountable or anonymous. So if you make it um, anonymous, you'll often get more honest feedback or opinions. Um, I know that, you know, if I have a discussion in class and I ask a question, you know, there's a lot of people who kind of look around, okay, that's what she said, and I've got a crush on her. That's, you know, that's, that's my best friend. That's what he thinks. So I'm going to just go with him, right? We've all had that experience. But if you do it anonymously, it allows everyone to participate and uh, you will get much more honest feedback. All right, and this is this is critical um, to to the point of using back channels. And if you do it where you actually have them use their real name, it's much easier to track participation. Now, I don't know about all of you, but um, I do try to track participation, and that's impossible, right? You know, the people are answering questions, and what do you do? How do you track it? But if you use a back channel discussion, you can very easily monitor and assess, assess their participation. All right, so uh, if you're with me so far, give me a little thumbs up real quick. Just real quick, give me a little thumbs up, make sure that I know you're there. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Lisa. Kimberly, I see you, but I don't see your thumb yet. Hopefully, you'll get there in a second. Um, uh, so let's keep moving now. Um, next slide here. Um, last reason to use back channels is oftentimes back channel tools like Twitter, the 140 characters, right? It's really critical that our students are able to summarize. Summarizing is actually the second most important skill for doing well on standardized tests. And so while we oftentimes kind of look at, at, um, at, at 140 characters and we say, oh, that's not good and that's bad and so on and so forth, it's actually a really important skill because if you can summarize something in 140 characters via Twitter or within a couple of sentences in like a Today's Meet feature, that is a really important skill because that takes a lot of work to think about maybe a big passage or a big lesson or a big chapter and put it into 140 characters. So um, those are the three, I think, main reasons to really use uh, back channels. And then, of course, we've got the, the three R's, which is the next slide. Um, how you can use back channels, and this is kind of how we're going to frame our discussion today, to build relationships, to create relevance, and to establish rigor for our students. So that's how we're going to frame it today. Um, as we get moving. So before we go any further though, you guys have been inactive long enough. Let's go to Twitter um, and if you, or I'm sorry, let's go to todaysmeet.com. All right, todaysmeet.com. So if you go to todaysmeet.com, let's use the first of our tools. All right, so log on to todaysmeet.com and go to LBP chat. All right, todaysmeet.com slash LBP chat. Do not type in your real name, okay? Do not type in your real name. And I'm going to ask, um, again, have you ever used a back channel in class discussion before? Now, I know a couple of you have already answered that. So if you have, try to be specific about how you used it. And if you have not, tell me why not. Is it because you don't know about them? Is it because you have a social media policy that you're uh, scared to use them? Is it because you just haven't had good ideas? Why haven't you, uh, up to this point, used a back channel discussion? And there's, there's nothing if you have not, okay? Um, just trying to get an idea. So, again, todaysmeet.com slash LBP chat, all right? Once you log in there, um, you will see that I've already put the question there, and there's a little grammatical error. It, uh, I was trying to put a space in, and it posted it anyway, so you'll see the question there. But... Um, this is a great example of a back channel. Okay, today's meet is easy to set up. You have 140 characters to answer the question. And what happens here is it's free. You can set it up and then you can also um, print out a transcript or save the transcript of the whole conversation that occurs. So again, um, I have not used back channels in class, but I want to. Okay, thank you, Chloe. Thank you. Good, 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 good. So now what you're going to see is once you log on there and people start participating, you're going to be able to see a running discussion of what is occurring. So even if I go ahead and continue to present, if you're on that site there, what you will see is a running discussion of what everyone else is saying. Uh, didn't know about that, but want to learn more? Great, Renee. So again, this is a real, this is the essence of a back channel. Okay, and there's lots of tools. This particular tool is called Today's Me. 
Um, and I use this one a lot in class. I can see a few of you still haven't participated and that's okay. Um, but if you'd like to, we'd appreciate it. Now, this may happen in class, okay? And this is one of the first things about using a back channel. If you're using a back channel, and what happens when students don't participate? Right, that's a, that's a critical answer. Well, again, if you have them put in their real name, now they're accountable. So if you count this as points, then I would be able to say, okay, you know, some people haven't participated. So um, I, I had you do this anonymously today, okay? But if I were to do this in real time um, and, and make it accountable, we would see how many people of you, or how many of you actually have created, and I could get points for that, okay? The next tool, real quick, let's go to the next slide, please, is Twitter. Now, this is another way, okay? Um, and again, I'm gonna get out of uh, using tools real quick. I just wanna demonstrate these to get started. This is another way for you to, um, to use back channels, okay, is, is on Twitter. I'm gonna start giving you practical examples in a minute, but if you are on Twitter already, um, I would just like you to answer very generally, okay, very generally, what's the best thing about discussions in class? Not back channel discussions, just discussions that you have with your students. What's your favorite thing about having a discussion in class? Um, if you could just share that on Twitter and then put the hashtag, as you can see there, LBP. Um, so I am going to go ahead and put an answer in. And what you will see there is if you log on and you go to the hashtag LBP, what you will see is my response will pop up and then everyone else's responses will pop up. Now, sometimes it does take a second, okay? But this is another way that you can use um, Twitter for a back channel discussion, all right? And again, I just want us to, I'm just encouraging us to try these things today so that uh, so that you can kind of see how we could use them. Okay, um, so go ahead and put that into Twitter, and then and we will um, keep moving forward here. Now, classroom Emma favorite is engaging students. Yes, making the, the teaching and learning about them. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that I think we have to to try to remember is that teaching uh, is, is not about teaching; it's about learning. Right. So. I think that's a critical thing. Okay, so how do we build relationships? Um, well, the first thing is um, I just used the back channels, Mitch and I did, to find out some information about you. I know that we have people from Jacksonville, we have people from Illinois, um, and so if we go to the next slide, my question is what could you find out about your students via a back channel? Um, could you ask them at the start of the year what's your favorite music, what's your favorite pet, what's your favorite, etc.? Now you could obviously do this um, many ways, a Google form, you could do this with the old write on a note card, etc. But sometimes students aren't quite as um, willing to uh, say things out loud, right? But they're more than willing to put it on a back channel. So I use back channels a lot at the start of class just to get them discussing things. Nothing very serious, but I try to find out all types of information about them. Things that are important, like what neighborhood do you live in? Things that are silly, like uh, what's last CD that you or what's the last album or, or record that you downloaded on iTunes um, something like that so trying to get as much information and try to build that relationship with students as possible the next thing that uh, I like to do and this is a uh, this is really critical this is a great one to build a relationship um, as we move forward Mitch is collaborative questions so I have students ask a question on the back channel and then they have to answer each other's questions now what this does is this creates a culture in the classroom where I'm not the only source of information. And I think this is really, really critical. Um, it's critical that we are not the ATMs of knowledge, right? Everyone in our class has a lot of knowledge. And so one of the things that I do is as I'm going through a lecture, if I have a back channel open and students are using them, they can answer each other's questions and I encourage them to do that. I can still moderate it. I can still look through to make sure they're giving the correct answers or the the types of things that um, that we want them to repeat, but it's critical they understand that I'm not the only one with knowledge, that they have knowledge as well, and that I encourage them to share that. Um, little side note, by the way, if you're scribbling furiously, don't. I will give you all the slides at the end, okay? You'll have all the slides at the end, so 
Um, I don't want you to feel like you have to try to jot everything down, okay? Because you will be getting these slides at the end. All right, so another way to build relationships with students is um, anybody ever do debates in class? Um, if you've ever done debates, you know what often happens is that whoever wins the debate is the one who speaks the loudest or the longest, right? Or perhaps is the most eloquent. That doesn't mean that they've made the best points. So one of the things that I know some teachers are doing that I, I love, and I've actually tried it as well, is split the teams, uh, split the class into two teams, and then have a back channel debate. So I give one side five minutes to put up their initial point, and the next side gets five minutes to respond, and then point two, and then respond, and then point three, and then respond, and then switch it. And what this does is it really makes the class think about how can they get their point across in a little amount of inf a little only 140 characters and it's not just about who yells the loudest or who has the biggest personality it's really about the point and the fact and i think that that's that's a really nice um critical part of using back channels for um, debates all right so i encourage you to think about that uh, next slide another way to build relationship Instead of writing um, down how students feel each day, could you have them do a journal on a back channel? So one of the things, and obviously they're not going to get too personal, but you could potentially create a back channel for each student in your class, and every day they have to go in and write down how they feel about something or what they learned for that day, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I encourage um, you to think about doing this because, again, you can get to know students a lot more this way than perhaps trying to have a conversation. We all know what it's like when you have 27 students in a class, and I'm sure that we all make an effort to say every student's name every day because we want that to build that connection, whether it's when they're walking into class or when they're leaving or during class, really trying to build a connection every day. But you can also create a back channel for each of your students that maybe only you and they ha have the access to. And then they could, eat once a day, put down one thing about themselves that they've learned from their day, how they feel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think this is a really, really nice way to get to know your students. So um, that's the first thing is just very simply using back channels to build relationships. What I'd like you to do real quick is partner up with someone else, partner up with someone else, so just simply drag your screen next to them. We'll take two minutes here and tell them one thing that, that stuck out to you, one, one way that you could build relationships in class, all right? Don't be shy now. Partner up with someone else. Just drag your point on them, and your, your screens will come together, and you can have a quick conversation. What's one way that you could actually um, interact with students uh, and build a relationship with them? All right, let's take two minutes and do that. Go. So I brought Zachary down so that um, you all see that Zachary is, is in the audience as well, and he can join in your discussions. So uh, you've got, uh, I guess, a minute, about a minute and a half left uh, to talk about uh, what struck you from the different types of back channels that uh, Zachary mentioned. And I might go through some of the slides quickly going backwards so that you get a chance to see them. So um, again, I know some of you are still talking, and, and you can finish those conversations up. I, I, uh, I'm glad that some of you paired up. Very well done. Very well done. So again, the first part of back channels is just simply how do we get to know our students? We know, um, as you all know, no matter what level you're at, you have to you have to know your students, and that's that's critical uh, for them to learn building that relationship. So the second thing is relevance. Now, um, as we go through these slides. Um, I think it's it's critical to think about um, you know those three R's relationship relevance and rigor and let's look more specifically about how we could use back channels for relevance. So um, one of the things that I try to do every couple of weeks or every three weeks is I have every student write down whatever we're talking about or whatever the teaching is going on. How is it relevant to their own lives? And one of the things that I do in back channels is I do not allow them to write down what anyone else has said. So essentially, if I have 20, 25 students in class, then they have to write down whatever we're talking about. And um, it can be anything. How is it relevant in their own lives? How is it important in their own lives? And how do they tie that back? So, um, you know, whatever you teach, and all of us teach different things, why is it important? And, you know, do, I know we all probably ask that question, why am I learning this? It's a completely valid question, right? So I throw it back to them. Why are we talking about this? Can you tell me how this will impact you? Show me an example in your real life. 
and have them discuss that. And again, I don't, you can't do this every day, but once every couple of weeks, maybe each unit, why is this unit important to you? How do you think this impacts what you're going to do or what you've done? So I think it is critical. Um, that's, that's one simple way to use a back channel is to get them to think about why do we talk about this? And then the thing is, when you do a back channel discussion, not only do they get their own take on it, but they get every other student's take as well. And I think that that's really, really nice. So a second thing is um, use it as a writing prompt. Have students write a response to a question using as many blank as possible. So um, vocab words that you're talking about, adjectives, colors, verbs, etc. So again, I'll po throw up a question on a back channel and then have the students respond using as many whatever characters, um, historical figures, facts, equations as possible. And I think this is a really nice way for them to be able to practice in only 140 characters, that small amount, but also use as many things as possible. And all this is occurring, again, while you're teaching. Now, the other thing that's really critical to think about back channels is can you also use back channels at home? Could you give a back channel as a homework assignment? Absolutely. And I think that this is uh, something that, that's important to think about. I'll often do this and, you know, I'll teach a lesson and I'll say, okay, uh, you know, or we'll have a discussion in class and I'll say, okay, here's the link, here's the back channel link. Um, go ahead and uh, tonight I'd like you to add one additional thought, okay? And this kind of goes to these discussion add-ons um, with the slide that's up right now. So we have a great discussion in class. I'll give them the link to a back channel. At n that night they have to go in and add one additional thought after they've had time to reflect. Now the nice thing about this kind of assignment is what do I now have the next day? Before class starts the next day, I've got a list of all of their kind of add-on thoughts or all of their reflective thoughts. This is a real critical piece because now I can start the next class with those add-on thoughts, with those relevant thoughts. And that's, that's a really, really, really nice, uh, nice thing to have. So. Um, a discussion add-on is, is, is a nice, nice topic, a nice way to, as well. Um, keep moving along there. Uh, this is one that I love. Could you start at the front of your class, depending on how your students are seated, right? Have them write a story. So each student has to add one sentence to the story. So you could also do this in alphabetical order. Now this story, if, it, if, you're, writing, if you're a language arts teacher or a, uh, English as a foreign language teacher, et cetera, that would be good. But let's say that you teach something like civics or history or something like that. You could have your students write a whole class story about a certain event. So for example, um, let's say that I start with Mitch and I say, Mitch, you add the first sentence to the story. And then Emma, you're going to finish, write the second sentence. And then Kimberly, you're writing the third sentence. And then Katie, you're writing the fourth sentence. So then every student has to add a sentence on to that story. And as the, afterwards, you'll have a whole story about a certain event, or uh, it doesn't even have to be an event. It could just be a story about anything. But each person then will have a specific part that they've played, and they can see how you build this together, right? And you can moderate this whole thing. Again, another way to give every student a voice in class. Um, okay, keep moving. Um, also, we can um, write a class summary. So oftentimes, um, have students summarize that day's lesson. This kind of goes back to what we talked about before. Um, they add on a discussion, but instead of them just giving a thought, they have to actually summarize something and add that on. But again, now the nice thing about this is let's say that um, I have Patrick puts the first uh, the first summary up there, right? No one else can put down what Patrick has said, so they can't just say I agree with Patrick. Everyone has to, in their own words, summarize that day's lesson, and that can be a really really um, effective way to kind of summarize the uh, the day's lesson. So um, let's keep moving here. Um, Back channel characters. So one of the things that I, I think is really fascinating to do is assign students a character in a novel, a historical figure, an element in chemistry, something, anything that's within your content area, and have them carry out a conversation on a back channel. So let's say that um, I assigned Katie the chemical or the element uh, gold, and Audrey, you are oxygen. 
what would that conversation look like between gold and oxygen, right? Or maybe you give them um, characters in Huck Finn, or maybe you give them Abraham Lincoln and Barack Obama. What would a conversation between those two people look like, right? So this is a really interesting way for them to kind of step in to the role of a historical figure or an element or a character and really get them engaging and interacting. I think this one's fantastic. I, I work with a, an English teacher who does this and she's just an amazing teacher and her students really get engaged when she starts using this um, in class. Um, so uh, moving on now, for students with special needs or, or just students who are socially not adapted, maladaptive, um, could you show your students this photo in class and ask the students in the back channel, how do you think the person is, is feeling? Back channels can be a great way for you to throw something up, a picture, um, an event, etc. Um, and, and then ask them to analyze that via back channel. Because when we do this in class, again, if we ask them, you know, how do we, uh, how do you all think this person's feeling? Only one or two or three people really have the time to answer. And even if we get to that fourth or fifth person, oftentimes they're, conver they're gone. They've already, they just agree. So what you can do is just say, how do you think that person is feeling? Everyone has to respond on the back channel. Uh, Patrick asked a really good question. Um, how do I respond directly to different students? I just put the at sign, you know? So the at symbol, um, for example, the at Patrick or at Emma or at Sam, et cetera. And then I respond directly to that way. Now, if they're doing the students' collaborative questioning, I also will have them do that. So if, if I ask a question, and let's say that Katie responds to me, she'll put at Zachary and then her response. So yes, just using the at symbol is a great way for them to interact. So moving on, um, here's the other thing. Uh, what I'll often do um, and what some of the other teachers, again, everything that I do, I just learn from other teachers, right? Good teachers are good thieves. So I, I've just taken stuff from other people, and I think that that's, that's critical. Um, post the learning objective at the start of the unit, and then at the end, they have to say how they've met that learning objective. Not via a test, right? Not via a standard assessment, but they have to write down how did they feel like they met that learning objective. Or at the start, we can also put the learning objective up and say, what do you think this means? And have them kind of analyze it. Again, the critical thing with back channel discussions is that they're, they can be very efficient. And I think this is one of the most critical things because we want our kids talking about things. We want our students discussing the issues in our class. But what we don't want and what can't happen is the time factor. We don't have time to get to everybody. So one of back channels can be a great way for all of them to describe how they're meeting the learning objective, for all of them to give an idea what they think that objective is about. Uh, last one real quick before I ask you another question. Um, book summaries or chapter summaries. Um, for example, let's say that I gave all of you right now uh, a back channel and I said, summarize the last book that you've read, and then everyone else had to guess what book their peers are describing. Right? So that is a really interesting um, idea, again, depending on the level that you teach, depending on your students. Um, but you could also do summarize the chapter in your book, summarize a news article that you read, summarize a current event, summarize the political race in the U.S., although that's pretty dangerous at this point, right? But summarize something and then have other students, right, guess what they're describing or guess what you're describing. And again, if we were to do this in class, this could take a long time. But if we do it via a back channel, it can be very quick, easy. And a lot of times our students will have a chance to think very differently about, um, about things because they're forced to actually think. They just can't be a, a passive participant. So, um, OK, let's uh, pair up with someone again. Think about one activity that you and your students could do using back channels. Um, Let's, let's share with the participants. So drag, uh, drag your cursor together or drag your faces together. It can be the same or a different person. Let's match up and take two minutes here and, uh, and talk about uh, what's one activity that you could do using back channels. And while you're at it, why don't you post your, uh, your summary 
onto Twitter using the pound sign LBP hashtag. Okay, uh, we're back. Does anyone want to share? Um, this is one of the features of Shindig that, that I think is fantastic. We can actually pull any of you up and have you share one quick idea um, about how you could use back channels in class or, or maybe it's something you've already tried. So um, if you don't mind raising your hand, I'd love to have someone just real quickly share. We've got about 10 or 15 more ideas and then I'll leave a little bit of time at the end um, for, for questions or, or things like that. We've got real ideas and then I want to give you some ideas for getting started. But um, if you could raise your hand if anyone feels like sharing, um, it would be awesome to have one of you actually share how you think you could use uh, back channels in class. So I'll give a little bit of time here. Don't be scared though. Um, please feel free to pop up and, and share one, one thing that you could do in class. Just, just click on the raise hand button um, in the bottom right hand side of your screen there. Mitch will see it and then he'll be able to pull you up. Or I could just protest and say I'm not going on until someone shares. But I'd like to not do that. Anybody? All right, Mitch, if you don't see anybody, I guess we'll, we'll move on, which is fine. Um, lots, of, uh, lots of other ideas. Okay, so finally, um, rigor. Um, now, again, uh, one, one of the big things about back channels is having students have to be active participants, right? So um, one of the great things you can do is actually have everyone participate. And when we talk about rigor, if we go to the next slide, back channels can be great for formative assessments. So middle of the class, how often do we say, uh, does everyone understand? Does everyone get this? Well, again, the, the worst thing that you can do um, as a student a lot of times is raise your hand and say, I don't understand, right? That's terrifying as a student. So rather than that, I'll just sit there and even though I don't understand, I won't say anything. But what you can do in the middle of a class is throw up a back channel and do a little formative assessment. Ask them a question or a problem. Uh, give them an equation. Ask them to explain it. Uh, ask them their thought to summarize, etc. So this is something that you can do and just take five minutes in the middle of a class or even just a couple of minutes. Have a back channel ready give them a problem, have them answer it. And again, if you do it where they, they have to be held accountable, where everyone puts their name up, then everyone has to answer. And you can go back and see, okay, who really gets it and who doesn't. So formative assessments, a great way in the middle of the class that, to, to have a little rigor to the lesson because they're happy active participants. Um, next one, and this is fantastic. I work with a history teacher who does this and I love it. Um, you could either have a video that you show or just give them parts of a formula, or parts of a compound, or a date in history, or a description of an event in history, or maybe a description of a story in literature, and just give them a, a half of it. And then the students have to go into the back channel and actually submit the rest of the solution. So they have to tell you the rest of the thing about the event, or they have to give you the rest of the, uh, the formula, or they have to give you the rest of the compound, right? And so this is a really interesting way to kind of quiz them and have fun with it, but also, again, making sure that every student is answering, right? Um, next one, primers. So one of the things that we're pretty good at in education is, uh, is reviewing, but we're not really good at previewing. So one of the things um, that, that you can do is actually send out a primer the day before or at the start of the lesson. Um, it's a clue, a hint, a brain teaser right for the next day's lesson and then the students have to guess what they think they're going to learn or discuss it's pretty cool because again this is another one of those like many of these almost all of them you can do at home as well right you send them out um, a little message or maybe you give it to them uh, as they leave class or whatever and then they have to go home and fill out the back channel and think about what they think they're going to learn in class and again you could even give points for the most creative idea or um, how they're going to tie whatever clue you give them into something. Or maybe if they get it right, they get a bonus point. But it's not about being right. It's about, again, everyone participating and actively trying. And so I think that that's, that's another nice way for them to, to think about rigor a little bit. Um, so we're actually going to skip the next green slide there, Mitch. Um, 
and keep going to the next slide, the orange. Uh, a couple more ideas about back channels for demonstrations, organizations, and fun. So if we go to that next slide, oftentimes a back channel is a great way to start class for two reasons. A, start with the discussion. Now maybe it's a serious discussion if you want to try to bridge what you did before. Maybe it's something whimsical. Maybe it's a current event that happened since the last time you met, etc. But a, a couple of things that this does. First of all, it primes the brain for the lesson because if they were out in the hall, they were talking about Justin Bieber or uh, Drake or the dance on Friday night or the football game or whatever, right? So that first five minutes now, they come in, you do it as a bell ringer, you get a discussion, they have to be quiet, they have to participate, it kind of gets them focused on the lesson. And this is a nice way just to organize and to kind of get class started. The other thing obviously with this is you could do it at the end of the class, the last five minutes. Right, and we talked about some of those ideas before. Summarize the lesson, or do an add-on discussion, etc. But really nice for for bell ringers as well. Um, as we keep moving forward to the next slide, real-time communication. So if you go on a field trip, or a com, if you're away at a conference, or if, if they've got some kind of learning journey, have students keep a running commentary of what's going on via the back channel. That way, for students who maybe aren't in class or aren't on the field trip, or maybe you have students that are sick that day, they can have a real-time commentary of what you're doing, whether you're in class or whether you're out away on a field trip or on a, again, a, if you're at a conference, you can still have a real-time discussion even if you have a sub in class, right? You could actually have a real-time discussion um, from, from afar while you're moderating it and the students participate in it. So lots of, lots of uh, opportunities and options there. Um, quiz questions. So next one. Um, each day, have your student put in one thing they think should be on the quiz. So what's one question that they feel like they should be on the quiz? Now a couple things that you can do here. The next class you start with those questions to do what you talked about. But you can also use these questions to make up tests, quizzes, assessments later. Right. So as they go through the lesson, as you're up there teaching, if they think, wow, that'd be a good quiz question, they put it on the back channel. At the end of the day, you have 23 different questions, right? Because no one can put the same question down. You can start the next day with those questions. And you can also pick out, say, six or seven of the best ones and actually make that as part of your assessment, right? So really nice way to get them involved and take some ownership as well. Um, now, this next one is probably one of the best things that, that I do. Um, I use a back channel during all presentations. Um, as, as many of you know, you give group presentations and uh, what happens is groups get up there and they talk and every other group tries to stay awake, right? Or they're just patiently waiting for their turn. So I have a back channel going throughout the group presentation. Every other person has to put in one thing they learned from the group, one thing the group did well, and one thing they think the group could improve on. This has been really, 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 I can't emphasize this enough, really helpful and really good for students. A, it keeps them engaged, but B, it also makes them critically think about what they're learning. C, what I do then is I create a transcript of that and I give that feedback back to the groups. So even the group that's presenting, now they get feedback on things that the audience liked and things that they think they could improve on. And then I'll sometimes, if I have enough time, the next class, they can come back and address any of those questions or concerns that um, the audience may have had. So next one, um, could you use a back channel for them to imagine? So for example, what did the scene in blank look like when, right? If you insert a, a novel or a, a historical event, what was the reaction of when Gettysburg happened or um, Custer's last stand? What did the lab look like when penicillin was discovered or you know, whatever it is, your, your content or you know your content better than I do, right? But have a back channel discussion about imagining what that event looked like, what that, what that thing looked like. And this gets them really creatively uh, engaged. And I think this is a pretty powerful thing that we can do as well. How do you think blank would have felt during the Civil War? How do you think refugees feel right now when they figure out that Greece's borders are going to be closed? whatever it might be, right? So I think it's it's a really nice um, way to, again, to get everyone involved in the discussion 
and have them imagine, put their themselves in someone else's shoes. Um, last little one here uh, before we get into just some getting started takeaways. Uh, everyone has to put a takeaway. Now we talked about this again, and, and I've I've asterisked here. Cannot put the same thing as anyone else. So for example, at the end of this discussion, I could have each of the 15 of you say, what's one thing you take away? Put that in the back channel. You cannot put the same thing as anyone else. A, every audience member walks away with 15 different takeaways. B, I walk away with, okay, this is what they got. Wow, I really was hoping they would get that. They didn't even mention that, right? So it gives us a little self-check as teachers as to what we can do better, what they thought we emphasized, what we didn't emphasize enough, et cetera. So, um, all right, getting started with back channels. Now, um, a couple of things to think about. Um, how are you going to organize your discussions? So again, are you going to make them anonymous where they don't have to put their real name in? And again, obviously there are some dangers with this. What if they start putting up things that aren't correct or aren't, uh, aren't um, beneficial to the conversation? Let's phrase it that way, right? So do you want it to be anonymous? The good thing about anonymity is that they might be more honest in what they feel or their opinions. But how are you going to organize that? Um, are you going to have them go in a certain order? Or is it just going to be anyone can answer at any point? Are you going to have them respond to each other? And like Patrick asked earlier, if they respond to each other, do they put an at sign? Or do you have some other kind of indicator about what they put? And then finally, if you're going to have multiple questions, are you going to have them go in order? So are you going to put Q1 and then have them answer that? And then you have to make sure that if you are putting in multiple statements that you're labeling them accordingly. So you really want to think about how you're going to organize your back channel discussion. Second thing is, do you have students with dyslexia or possibly students who um, have some type of physical disability that will not allow them to type as quickly? Um, I love back channels, but as a special educator, I always have to check to make sure that all of my students can be included in this because uh, a back channel discussion for a student with dyslexia is impossible or, or it's very difficult, let's put it that way, because there's so much text and it's going through so quickly they have a really hard time keeping up, as well as if you have a, a learning delay, right? If you have a learning disability and there's a delay, sometimes that can be very difficult to keep up as well. So you just want to think about um, you know, all the students in your class and their particular needs. Back channels are fantastic, but it may not be the best thing for all students. All right. So um, a couple other things here. Do you have a media release agreement? Um, you want to be clear about how you're going to protect their anonymity and privacy. So, uh, for example, on the Today's Meet, the LBP chat that we're, we're on today, anyone could randomly just join that chat and start seeing what everyone else has put. Um, you can protect them, you can close them, but you want to think about how you're going to do that. Um, I always encourage teachers to start with a silly experiment. Do not do something very serious the first time you use a back channel, all right? Because students are going to find it fun, they're going to get crazy, they might put things that are slightly inappropriate. Um, so always want to start with, uh, you know, just a, just a general conversation. And after you do a couple of those conversations and you and the students know how to use it, they feel comfortable with it, then you can actually say, okay, now class, you know, let's get serious on this. I want you to really take this one seriously um, and, and move from there. But you always want to start with something that's not, not quite as serious uh, while they get the hang of the tool and you can figure out, you know, set some guidelines for what's appropriate and what's not. Um, and then also try to do one in class first and then try one from home. Um, if you're in class, uh, it's a little more controlled and, you know, you students may not... Um, be uh, quite as able or willing or adventurous if they can look up and see you when they're at home uh, in their own living room or bedroom or wherever they have a lot more um, freedom to say things that, that maybe aren't conducive to a good conversation. So, um, all right. So what I'd like you to do then, let's go back to Twitter real quick. Um, of all the things that we've covered today, um, I'd like you to think about one that you want to try with class. Not one that you could do, but one that you're actually going to try with class. So let's post that in Twitter. Um, and, and as a bonus, let's also post it in the IM chat. All right. So post it in Twitter or post it in the IM chat. Um, uh, and, and let's see what kind of responses we can get there. What are some of the things that you could... Um, 
you could do and that you want to do. So again, put it in the IM chat or put it on Twitter with the hashtag LBP. All right, put in the hashtag with LBP. All right, so let's, uh, let's look through there. Let's take a couple of minutes and then I will give you a couple more tools, the access to the slides, and if we have any questions, we can hang out with them. Um, yeah, Patrick, good. Geography, uh, self-quiz themselves. Great, great. So you could post a, a picture, you could put something up, or, or even just a couple acts about countries, um, capitals, etc., cetera, and, and have them quiz themselves. Fantastic. And they could do that interactively and collaboratively as well. Uh, who else has got any other ideas? Yes, uh, Emma, presidential candidate, a debate tax reform. Absolutely, absolutely. Great idea. I love the idea of them imagining that there's someone else. Uh, I think that that's really, really powerful and, um, and really, really important for them to think about. Um, yeah, good, Patrick. Uh, you know, again, like you said, kind of guessing um, where other people are. Give them clues as to where they are. If you go to a conference or you go away, having them guess about where you are. Um, takeaways are really important. And like you say here, Katie, um, with the class story and also the summarizing idea, it also is very good for us to see where they're at. And I think that that's, that's, that's really critical that we can kind of see where they're at. And so we know that next class, what they're going to do. Kimberly Good. Primers, yeah, primers, giving them clues or giving them ideas and having them figure out. Uh, vocabulary primers, word primers, any of that kind of stuff. Good, good, good. Okay, so um, as we kind of wrap up here, um, here are some other tools that you can use. If we uh, look there, we've got today's meet. You can use them on most LMSs. Um, Edmodo is one LMS. There's lots of others. Linwit, back channel chat, Poplet, and obviously Twitter. Um, there's lots of tools out there. These are just six that you can maybe get started with. Um, if you do want the slides for today, uh, they can be found at this next uh, slide. Just bit.ly, it's just a bit.ly link, uh, ZW back channels, all right, ZW back channels. Um, so that will give you access to all the slides and all the ideas that we, we discussed today. And um, again, I, I can't go through everything today because we only have an hour, but hopefully, you know, these 15 or 20 ideas that you've gotten today, you can kind of tweak and make your own um, and, and they will help you as you move forward. Um, everything that we've talked about today um, will they also be on my website, Patrick. Um, I will put, yes. Um, I will get all the links to all my webinars up on the website. We've got another webinar coming up on interesting uses of video in class. Um, and so that, when is that? Let's see. That is May 10th. Sorry, I had to look at my calendar. That is May 10th. Um, and I've got five webinars now through EdChat Interactive after we get that one done. And so I'll put all those links up, Patrick. Um, they won't be up immediately, but I will get those up in the next uh, couple. Okay. Um, so thank you. Good question. Um, okay, so if you go to the next slide, Mitch, um, remember, I, I hate to, I'm not trying to sell the book, but there's a lot more ideas in here. So if you found some practical ideas that you like today, there's um, back channels, how to use Twitter in the classroom, photos, videos, GPS, there's all kinds of ideas in the book. And um, finally, last slide, uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. I'll hang out for a couple minutes if anyone has questions or wants to talk. Um, let's uh, just just let me know and, and I'm always available so you can reach me via Twitter you can email me um, and I would love to work with you all some more Emma thank you so much I'm glad that you enjoyed it and hopefully you got some really good ideas so um, let me know if you have any questions I'll hang out for a few minutes thank you Katie thank you for participating so so I, I had a question because it seemed to me one of the things that uh, that you could do with students is if there's something special that's going to be on TV, like a candidates debate, as as one example, uh, you could have the students be streaming in a clash, some class hashtag, so that you could all get into a discussion about what's happening. Maybe it's a maybe it's a, a you know a documentary on the Civil War or or some something else that's on TV. Have have, have you tried that, or do you know teachers who who do that? Yeah, I, I, that's, um, I know a lot of, of teachers that have done I've not personally done it, 
but mm -hmm. um, this goes back to that kind of idea that in real time discussion, no matter where you are, what's going on. So, like right. you said, this is a perfect time of the year with with the debates, with the political campaign, but also with current events. You know, news stories, etc. Have them, and, and and depending on what you're doing, you know, uh, if you're watching, if there's a really good movie on, right, that that is covering a historical topic or something like that set up a back channel and have them discuss throughout. That, that's great ideas, Mitch, and I think there are lots of teachers doing this kind of thing. I personally haven't done that just because my topic area doesn't really lend itself to that so much. Um, right. But we do have real-time discussions, just not about those kinds of things. So, And thank you, Crystal. I see you you're tweeted there. Thank you. Patrick, I'm not sure that I did. I'll have to check, uh, I'll have to check my Twitter account to see if I got that, that tweet. So, and then, yeah, but uh, great idea, Mitch. And, and then uh, you, you mentioned the May 10th. Did you mention what the topic is going to be May 10th? Uh, videos, videos, videos. So um, some teachers are just doing some pretty amazing things. And, and when we talk about video, everyone says, oh, well, yeah, I use video. But um, I think a lot of students are just consuming video. They're not producing right. video. Right. And those are two, that's a very different skill set, right? So we're going to give a lot of examples about how teachers are using um, using video and and how they're um you know how they're using it creatively both themselves and having their students use it so that'll be a fun one that that could be six webinars but we'll try to yeah. we'll try to fit it in <laughs> to one minute okay all right so um i'll see you may 10th then uh or in your case yes. it's, for you it'll be may 11th uh because you're that you're a day yeah, ahead yes, it will. um but i'll i'll, yep. I'll see you then and uh, thank you again. Oh, I went, wait a minute. There's a question here. So let me just um, let me just see what the question is uh, from Kimberly. Uh, actually, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish the question so so everybody can see it. And um, okay. perhaps you can perhaps you can answer this question. Um, okay. So my take on the most um, you know what, I'm going to pull something up real quick because it, it, it relates directly to this question. Um, the question was, what is the most common technology weakness among teachers? Um, and, and it's a great question. I am going to hold this up to the screen. I hope you can see this. It's going to be back. That much? No. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's actually backwards. The screens are backwards okay. here. So, so here's what here's this quote, and I love this quote: "Insecurity kills more dreams than failure ever will." Right. Insecurity kills more dreams than failure ever will, and this is the most common thing that I see amongst teachers: is an insecurity to try new things, an insecurity to take that next step. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things that that I often say, and it, it's been repeated lots of times, is that um, technology is a mindset; it's not a skill set. And Mitch knows, I mean, he, you know, he, he, he travels all over. He does a lot of consulting work as well. As soon as teachers try things, oftentimes it's not scary anymore and they'll continue to go. And Patrick, you're right. It's that growth mindset, that idea that, hey, I'll just try something. So I think a couple of things that I see to answer your question more specifically, Kimberly, is this unwillingness to try, but also teachers are oftentimes looking for the big fix. Mm -hmm. Not understanding that, you know, the series of, this series of webinars that I've done are very simple things like photos, like videos, like using a very simple tool like Today's Meet for a back channel. So there's all these little simple things that teachers can do. And, you know, instead of looking for the app that's going to change the world, right, let's look at what the device that we already have. And I think that that's a critical a critical piece um, and, and helping teachers to kind of move forward into that mindset is, is really important. So um, that's the big thing I see. I don't, Mitch, what do you think? I mean, so, so I think, you know, the whole question of technology and education, it's more about change management than it is about the technology. And anytime you introduce change, people are going to lose something and they're going to gain something else. And so what we have to understand when we want to introduce technology into schools or have anybody apply a new technology is we have to make them feel comfortable with the change, make them feel that the change is going to be of more help than it is of hindrance, but also to acknowledge that there is going to be some type of a hindrance because if we 
if, if we don't acknowledge that, then they're just not going to, we're not going to be credible because they know that there's going to be some time where they're going to be less effective than they were before they, they tried it. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, and that's part of it. Um, I think that that's important is that they kind of acknowledge, okay, this isn't always going to go smoothly. It, you know, it's just not. And that's part of the, that's part of, like you said, that's the deal. Um, but the things that I can gain outweigh these initial. And that's why I say start with something silly when you try a right. back channel, because it's not going to go great the first couple of times, you know, and that's okay too. That's okay too. Yep. Okay. So uh, do you have a, some final words that you want to impart? I before do. We... I want to say thank you. Uh, that's it. Well, I wanted to say thank you. You stole my words. So thank you, Zach. <laughs> and thank All you, right. everyone. Thanks, everybody. And see we, you May we, 10th, hopefully. See, yep, see you, see you May 10th, and we hope that you got a lot out of this, and um, and that you'll tell others. So, uh, Zach, uh, see you in about a month. All right, have a great Okay, and uh, this is Mitch Weisberg. I'm signing off for EdChat Interactive, and hope to see you all in the next uh, few weeks. Take care.